Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to talk about my Soderham couch again. We got this couch about six months ago. I actually posted a video about it five months ago about when we got it, put it together. We actually flipped our whole living room around to accommodate it because it's so big. And when we got it, I initially shared like all my thoughts on it. So I really wanted to do an updated video and give you my thoughts after having lived with it for six months so that if you are still considering getting the sofa, you have all the information. So I'm gonna flip the camera around real fast and show you the couch as it sits and how it's wearing right now. So here is the couch. Um, like I said, we've had it for six months now. You can tell like, where we sit. Okay. So I wanted to show you this stuff. We're actually going to wash the covers today, but I wanted you to see like how it wears and wrinkles. Um, obviously this is where we sit. So it does wrinkle, but like if you get close to the fabric, there's nothing wrong with the actual fabric. So it's not, um, pilling, it's not snagging. It's in overall really, really good shape, I think. I will say one thing, we took off the lumbar pillows. I have two, like one there, one here. I do not find them comfortable and they're not enough support for your back. So I'll talk about that more in detail in a little bit, but I just wanted to mention that's why those are not on there. Um, these are the back cushions, so I wanted to share that with you. Overall, they're like still really fluffed up. You can see because we lean on it that this part has flattened out. This part's pretty round and then it kind of like, let's see if I can show you, but it dips out like this from leaning our backs like this. Now, I have not flipped the cushions over. I will do that um, because they do need to be flipped as they get washed and things like that. So that stuff will even out, if that makes sense. But I wanna show you how the cushions are wearing. So we do have a few spots to try to get out today when we wash it. I'm pretty sure this is from wet swim trunks. Like it might be fabric dye, it may not come out. We'll find out how they wash up um, today. Um, but we do have like a couple of spots here and there to get out. Uh, the real question for me is going to be, what does this cover look like compared to the bottom? Um, you can kind of see that, like this is where feet rest, so this is a little bit dirty compared to this. So I am hoping they stay a similar color after they're washed. So I'm going to go ahead and take this thing apart. I'm going to time it so that you know how long it takes um, and how easy it is to disassemble to wash the cushion. <laughs> That took me about six and a half minutes from start to finish to take all of the cushions off, including the pillows, which really isn't that bad. Um, I did stain treat a couple of the cushions for like our spots and where that dye is. So I used some spray and wash. That's my washing machine going now. It's taking two loads to do these cushions. So I'm doing like all of the bottom seats together and then I'm gonna do all the back cushions and lumbar pillow cushions together. So it does say you can wash them on warm. I'm gonna do cold just because I don't want them to shrink at all. Um, and then you're not supposed to dry them like in the dryer. So it's a nice day out. I'm gonna put them outside and hopefully they dry in time for us to actually use the couch tonight because that's kind of our thing. <laughs> we lay around and cuddle and watch shows um, in the evenings. So I hope it's like <laughs> all dry for everybody, but whatever if it's not. Um, once they're washed and dried, I'm going to get back on here and tell you 
all about the couch and what I have learned over the last six months, what I think you will find useful information. Also, if you have any other questions about the couch, please leave them in the comments below. I try to get back to everybody and I'm happy to answer anything that you are wondering about. Okay guys, so I'm outside now, if you can't tell, but I was trying to figure out how to like dry these cushions like adequately. We don't have a clothesline and I don't want them like sitting on the patio furniture because some of it is metal, there could be rust. Like I don't wanna have to worry about it getting spotted up. So I have one of these, it's a Weatherall plastic sheeting. I had gotten it, um, to make a giant slip and slide last year during 2020. Something to do during COVID since we couldn't go to the pool. And I have like three of these. So I'm actually gonna lay this out. I'm just gonna lay them on here. I'm hoping it's big enough. It's like 20 feet long, I think. 25 feet long by 10 feet. So it should be plenty of space. So that's gonna be how I lay out my stuff. I don't know what your situation will be at your house, um, but that will be something you'd have to consider when you're washing these. Okay, so here are all the pieces laid out. Um, it's about 11.30 in the morning right now, so I'm gonna check on it in a couple hours and see um, if they're dry. I'll let you know how long it takes. It is very hot, humid today, like it's gonna be in the 90s and it's humid, so you know that'll give you an idea, I guess, of how long it will take. Um, these cushions right here have just like a dust um, cover underneath, so I don't know that they'll need to be flipped, but these cushions that are the back cushions are double-sided with the fabric, so I'm assuming they will need to be flipped. So maybe in like two hours, I'll come out here and flip everything. And then, again, I'll let you know how long it takes to dry.
So the couch is all put back together. It took me about 20 minutes from start to finish to put it back together. So a little bit of extra time than tearing it apart, which is expected. Um, I did work up a sweat doing it, but uh, it's worth it. Um, I did want to kind of show you, I just sat down there, that's why that's wrinkled, but the couch itself looks like brand new. Those spots I was pointing out that I washed, I did spray it with spray and wash, but even the dye from my husband's like swim trunks is gone. So I'm very happy with that. The only thing that I'm not loving the look of is these back pillows. I don't know if you can tell, but they kind of look like wrinkly and wobbly. That will, I think, fix itself when we start sitting on it and those cushions fill in the top. I don't know if you noticed, I had shown where the cushions themselves are much bigger than the actual liners. And so I think that that's why they do like this where they um, dip in because the liner, or yeah, the liner is like, squished in there basically to zip it up. So like I said, I think that will um, work itself out once we're like sitting on it again, but I'm gonna go ahead and talk to you about my thoughts on it after six months. Okay guys, so first of all, I wanna say it was actually really easy to wash. If you have a couch this big and you don't have an area with like a tarp that you can lay out like I did in the backyard, I would probably wash it in sections. You could very easily wash it and then dry it inside. It will take longer if it's not sitting in the sun. For me, it took, like I ended up leaving it out there two hours for the bottom cushions because like I said, they have that dust cover on the bottom and so it just didn't need any dry time on that part. But like the cushions that go on the back have two sides of fabric, so I left them out there two hours on each side. Everything's perfectly dry. That was plenty of time. Again, it's really hot and sunny today, so I'm sure that helped. But if you're drying it inside, I'm guessing it would take a full day for them to dry. So if you have space to do maybe two seats at a time, if you have a couch the size, it'd probably take you three days. I will probably likely always do it where I can dry them outside just because it was so easy. So my thoughts after owning it for six months, we still really love this couch. I feel very much the same about it as I did in my last video. The things I don't like, I don't like the feel of the material. It did not get any softer in the wash. I think that that's kind of a good thing, honestly, because it means it's holding up, but it's a rough texture, so it doesn't feel great against the skin. It feels like a canvas, but like a textured canvas, if that makes sense. So if you get a chance to go into an Ikea and feel the material, that will probably matter. But the material that this is, is holding up really, really well. I am very impressed with it. Compared to my microfiber couch that I had before this, um, I, 1000% love this fabric more. Even if it's less comfortable, I would much rather sit on a rough couch than have to clean that stinking microfiber couch that I had for 14 years. So it is a huge couch. And when I say huge, I mean the depth of it is almost too deep. Okay. So what I would say to you is if you're getting this couch, know that if you are a tall person, it's going to be more comfortable for you to sit on the seat than it is if you are a shorter person. I am 5'3". I'm gonna show you real fast what it's like for me. So I have a back pillow here, a lumbar pillow, but I'm gonna sit up like I normally would. And if you'll notice, the back of my knees are like on the seat. So if I go to bend my legs down, my feet won't touch the floor. I don't know how well you can tell that, but my calves, hit the side of this couch and then my feet just don't touch the floor. I could put my toes down and touch the floor, but they just hang because the back of my knees are on the seat, if that makes sense. Now, for someone who's the size of my husband, who's six foot, or my son, this is perfectly deep, right? Because they're gonna sit like this because they have longer legs and the back of their knees are going to sit fine. I have to scoop my bottom down and lean back in order for my feet to go onto the floor. I don't normally sit like this. I like my feet kicked up. What I will say is, if you want your feet kicked up, don't get an ottoman that's higher than your couch because this is not that comfortable. Like, you want one that's even with the couch or maybe even a little bit lower. So I don't love this. I need to probably 
figure out a different ottoman. But if you like to sit up, like I do, I end up doubling my pillows like this and going like this. This is how I sit at night. I have to have two pillows or I might go like this. In order to kind of relax, which is, it's a, that's a lot of adjusting to do. So as you can see, the depth makes it a little bit harder to actually use the couch comfortably if you're short. Not so bad if you're tall, it's not great when you're short. My husband ends up using one or two lumbar pillows as well. And like I said, he's six foot, but the way it sits, you wanna be able to recline, I think, and relax in your couch, at least we do. And so in order to do that, especially with our ottoman being higher, you know, our feet are angled up a little bit. We just have to have some cushion behind our back. So that's why we do that. I would recommend if you're getting this couch, we don't like the lumbar pillows that come with it. They're just not comfortable and they don't give enough support. I would get pillows that are this size. These are 26 inch pillows and I got them from Home Goods. They're filled with down. The down filling itself is so much more comfortable than the fiber fill that's in these. The actual cushions here are like a memory foam. And from what I can tell, it hasn't broken down at all based on how we've been sitting on it. So that's good. Those have been holding up really well, but I would recommend putting pillows like this all across the back. That is what I'm going to do. I have been on the hunt and I want some neutral ones that will go across the back that really never leave. And then I can add a couple accents here and there for the seasons, but the larger pillows are necessary to make this couch comfortable. So very comfortable couch, but I will also say because it sits low, it does make it hard for a coffee table. If you're wanting to kick your feet up, you probably need a coffee table that is around the same height as this couch. I don't think this is very standard as far as the heights of coffee tables. So you would just have to pay attention to that when you bought that. There is an ottoman that can come with it. We have it, we just have it on the end of our couch over here to give us more seating space. Someday that might live in the middle of our couch, but I doubt it just because I don't think I'm gonna like the matchy matchy look of it, personal preference, but that I'm sure would make a very nice, comfortable way to lay on it. The legs you can change out. There's lots of different places you can buy different legs. I probably will eventually just because I'm not a huge fan of the metal. I have not had any trouble with the pieces sliding away from each other. It's on carpet though. I'm sure that if you had it on wood floor, tile floor, you would have trouble and you'd probably have to clip them underneath. I talked about it in my first video, the mechanisms they use to clip them together, I'm not a huge fan of, but I'm sure they work. The other thing is, since it is not a very cushioned couch, like it's a pad like an inch and a half thick, basically, and the inside of the frame is open. You basically have your wood frame like this, fabric that goes over top of that, and then your seat cushion goes over top of that. So when you sit down in the middle of that cushion, you're basically kind of floating on that fabric, if that makes sense. So that gives you that give that makes it comfortable. But the thing is, it's a modular couch. So it doesn't have a thick cushion you're going to feel the frame when you sit on the edges. So if I sit right here in between, there's no give. I'm literally sitting on wood plus an inch and a half of memory foam, if that makes sense. If you sit down hard while not paying attention, you will hurt your rear end. The chase itself is great. It is not long enough, I would say, for somebody who's six foot. It fits myself and my daughter perfectly. I'm 5'3", she's 5'1". If you don't mind your ankles hanging over the end, it'd probably fit if you're six foot plus, but it is not, I don't think, an adequate length. If you want a full size length, I would personally choose to do um, a corner and then an extra seat for this part of the L like we did on this side. Um, that does give adequate length for a six foot person. My son is six one. He lays there and he can lay on those two pieces, the corner and the single seat, and I can curl up on the ottoman if I want to. I don't, but <laughs> we have enough room between those um, three pieces that he can lay straight out and I can sit on the ottoman. I can personally curl up on one of these sections 
very easily and comfortably as long as I have pillows to move around and make it comfortable. If you don't like throw pillows, you will not like this couch most likely. Unless you are a tall person, it's not going to be comfortable, I don't think, to sit on it with just the back cushion, the lumbar pillow, and nothing else. The lumbar pillows alone are a lot of extra pillows because it comes with one per seat. The other thing that we did, and I can't remember if I talked about this in my first review, but the back pillows, there's one per seat. Now, if you can tell on mine, I have one right here, one right here, and then I have one that's kind of in the middle, one right here, one right here. I'm gonna show you real fast how it's supposed to be because this will also show you how the couch lays. So this is how it's technically supposed to be. If you can see, there's a good, probably six inch gap between cushion and cushion. That gives you less room to sit on as like a couch, I think. It does though prevent you from sitting on the wood frames, so it's probably not that big of a deal. But um, I didn't like the look of seeing the back of the couch, especially since it sits so much lower than the cushion. So what we did was we took the cushion that's supposed to be on this end because I knew nobody would be sitting right there and I just stuffed it into this back part. And so it gives it more of a traditional couch look. As for being able to move the pieces easily, they are easily movable. They're not super heavy. The only thing is if you connect them, they are a pain in the rear end to move. So for example, I did not connect this single seat and this chase. I can easily pull this out away from the wall, vacuum underneath it, whatever I need to do. Same thing with this one. The corner, I have two single seats and a corner over here that I did attach the pieces to and I wish I had not. And I will eventually remove those honestly because like you can't move it easily to vacuum underneath it, which bothers me, um, or to be able to rearrange the furniture. The brackets for the corner couch are different than connecting the brackets for these. These come with almost like clamps to hold the wood pieces together. The corner seat, I covered this in my first video, have these metal brackets that sit like this and they go from one frame to the other, if that makes sense. And you have to like set one frame inside the other. I mean, I'm probably gonna have to hammer those things out in order to get them separated. And when I do, then I'm just gonna remove the metal brackets because I want to be able to move those pieces. So keep that in mind. If you, let's say, don't have carpet, maybe you buy a rug to put underneath it so they don't move all around or if you're planning on joining the pieces maybe you just use the clamps and not the metal brackets that come on the corner pieces those are not the greatest design in my opinion overall we still absolutely love this couch everyone in my family loves it it's a very comfortable couch. It is a very nappable couch. I don't even know if that makes sense, but like you can very easily lay down here. It feels like this is as wide as a twin bed. I mentioned that before that my kids have had sleepovers and they've each taken parts of the couch and are able to sleep on them very easily. Uh, my son actually takes naps on this couch. He could never nap on my other couch because it's like there wasn't enough space, but this one is wide and flat and it ends up being comfortable enough to do that. It is a great lounging couch and it is a great family couch. If you have lots of people who wanna sit down, if you entertain a lot, um, if you're just looking for something stylish, comfortable, affordable, this is the way to go. I 100% recommend it. I hope that this was informative and answered a few more questions that you may have had from my first video. If you didn't see that one, I show a little bit of putting it together, rearranging our living room, and like my initial thoughts on it too. So I'll link that below so you can check that out and get even more information about the couch. I also talk about delivery and costs and things like that. So that might be helpful. But if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.